hey YouTube, here's Heiko. Um, working on a little project. Uh, this, what you see here in front of us, is a already pretty butchered up um, spark plug. It has a 14 millimeter, 14 by 1.25 millimeter thread, long reach, and uh, I'm in the process of taking it apart. So uh, I kind of have to work on this because multiple reasons. I uh, ordered a color tune which is a spark plug replacement device that you put into the cylinder of a motorcycle for example. Um, it's a spark plug that has a section that's kind of see-through uh, so you can see the combustion in the combustion chamber and the color of it and they uh, give you a <clears throat> kind of a instruction telling you which color is good, which one is too lean, which is too rich, and which is acceptable. So you can see the color of the combustion. And uh, when it's like orange, yellow, then it's too rich. When it's white, then it's too lean. And if it's a Bunsen blue colored combustion, then you are right where you're right at the sweet, the sweet spot. I ordered the color tune for this motorcycle here, which uses uh, spark plugs with a 12 millimeter, 12 millimeter by 125 thread. And since uh, the, the opening is pretty small, I ordered the 12 millimeter one. The more standard um, color tune is the 14 millimeter version, which would fit my VW bus, my Ford truck, and all kinds of other projects that I work on. But I figured I can make an adapter, so I bought the smaller one to be able to use it on this motorcycle behind us. And now I'm taking a 14 millimeter spark plug, which is really old and cruddy and dirty and nasty. And I, um, yeah, let me see if I can still find this little round piece of metal that I get just cut up. I just used my hacksaw. Hacksaw? hexa and cut the upper edge of the metal off which is a uh, you know I guess it gets pressed in place they put this porcelain insert in here and then they they press the top of the metal to shape around the porcelain so it stays in there I just cut that off it was really simple it's not really hardened material or anything so my saw blade had no problem and um, as soon as I got through all around, the porcelain insert is already kind of loose. So now I'm just going to put it in the vise and get the insert out. I already um, cut off the ground electrode so I can, man, camera, come on now. Um, cut the ground electrode off so I can put a punch here right in the middle. All right, I'm going to put you in the, uh, in the camera stand and then we're going to keep going. So there goes nothing. I actually found a little uh, ring that I cut off. So this was on there, just cut all around it, came off and now it's already loose. And I don't know how much resistance it will give us, but I think if I get a punch out, let me grab a punch. And my trusted German style, this here by the way, let me zoom out. This is literally the format of every mechanics hammer in Germany. I don't know about Europe, but in Germany for sure. This is what you find in every shop. You know, mechanics don't use claw hammers that you use for framing. And wooden framing in the sense how we know it here in the United States doesn't really exist in Germany anyways because homes are not built out of lumber and, and particle board, you know. Or OSB boy or whatever. Uh, so this is a mechanics hammer. Uh, it's a two no five hundred grams. So this would be about a pound. Does that make sense? I guess yeah. Five hundred gram is about a pound. So it's not really super heavy, but uh, it gets the job done. Always has a wooden handle. I don't know. Nowadays you can probably get some fiberglass nonsense as well. But this thing is literally 
30 years old and I've been beating on stuff with this ever since. All right, let me beat on the spark plug. There you go. That was easy. So if you ever wonder how you, for example, you want to build a tool to uh, m make sure you have perfect top dead center, you can thread the inside of a uh, of a taken apart spark plug and put a bolt in there and then you can adjust the bolt length and uh, to the point where you feel your piston just turning around perfect top dead center so this is one application for this um, I'm going to use it for uh, this color tune adapter so I'm going to try to thread this but I just realized you know, a 12 millimeter spark plug, you would have to drill. So what is 12, uh, 12 times 0 0.8? That's 9.6. So for a 12 millimeter tap, you need a 9.6 millimeter drill. That would work. This is eight and a half, but up here is way too big. So in the upper section here, I can't tap 12 millimeter. So I might have to actually shorten this, cut it off just to leave a little bit of a shoulder so that the, the spark plug uh, thread can actually kind of seal. But then, yeah, I probably have to cut it off right here, right there. Now let's do that. And then we're going to go from there. I have a, a machinist friend over in Germany. Um, he's really good with the lathe. He has been working as a machinist for, I want to say, 20 years, over 20 years. So he could whip up an adapter for me in, in a heartbeat. Um, I already asked him and he said, yeah, no problem, can do that. Um, but if I have it available, then I don't have to wait until the mail makes it from Germany all the way to the United States of America, right? All right, let's cut it right there. Yeah, let's zoom in a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. Or not. Let's do that. There you go. And I don't have the right tap yet either. It needs to be 12 by 1.25. Which is a, a relatively standard thread size for a spark plug hole in motorcycle engines, uh, maybe some exotic cars. I think my Saab 9.3 at 2006 also had a relatively small threaded spark plug. <clears throat> So as you can see, it's not really hard or anything. There you go. Lop that off. Now it's probably a little warm. So we're now a little closer to the the inside diameter there down where it gets a little tighter so this is now nine and as I said for a 12 millimeter tap you need 9.6 so now I can literally put it in my drill press line it all up and um, here, let me zoom out a little bit for you guys Apparently my camera doesn't want to allow me to do that. So we're just going to move over to the to my little drill press. I'm going to pause and find a 9.6 millimeter drill and then we're going to go from there. Literally the first drill that I picked out of my random drill box. You know, I'm not very organized with my drills. It's just in a little drawer and they're all next to each other. And I always have to have the caliper out to find the right one. But literally the first one I grabbed, uh, it's it's a standard size drill bit, but it turned out to be exactly 9.6 millimeters. 
So that's exactly what we want. If you ever wonder how to calculate the drill size for a specific tap, um, with metric at least, you can just multiply the diameter of the tap. So if it's an M12 or a 12 millimeter tap times 0 0.8, and then you're always right there in the ballpark. Um, if you get below M4 or four millimeter, then the formula changes a little bit. I think then you have to uh, drill the hole a little smaller. Uh, I don't remember exactly, but most of the time I'm not tapping anything below four millimeter anyway. So it's M5, M6, M8, M10, that kind of stuff. And M10 is a eight millimeter drill. M5 is a four millimeter drill. So it's, it's <clears throat> I can calculate that usually in my head. So I don't need to get a book out and find out, oh, which drill size do I need? But that only works for uh, stuff in the metric world. This one was one sharp drill bit, hand sharpened by Heiko. It's uh, pretty good, pretty decent. So now I can beautify this a little bit, deburr, uh, probably file it straight and uh, see if I can buy myself an M12 by 1.25 um, tap tomorrow. And we have an adapter and yeah apparently this uh, this uh, little spark plug that comes from color tune then will fit inside of there and you can still see the combustion chamber i don't know exactly what it's going to look like but i want to be prepared so i i really i'm really excited to see how that works on this motorcycle behind me it's a four cylinder uh, zx 600c uh, kawasaki and uh, has four individual carburetors, so you have to be able to um, adjust the idle mixture on four carburetors. And, uh, you know, I have a CO tester for cars. doesn't help me here on a motorcycle because I, I can't measure the CO content in the exhaust gas for each individual um, cylinder. So that's why I'm not going to try out the color tune. But, yeah, if you need an adapter maybe for your uh, compression tester this is how you can do it it's not really difficult to take apart and it's not really super strong material either very easy to saw and to file all right guys little tidbit from Heiko. take care bye <clears throat>